Welcome to the UC IPM Urban and Community Webinar Series. My name is Elaine Lander, and I am the Urban and Community Educator with the UC Statewide IPM Program. Thank you for joining us today. Hi, I'm Belinda Messenger Sykes. I'm the Urban and Community Writer Editor with the Statewide IPM Program. And I am Carrie Winbill Rojas. I'm the Associate Director for the Urban and Community IPM Program with the Statewide IPM Program. All right, well, I'm your presenter today. Um, and uh, thanks everyone for joining us. We still have uh, participants who are joining um, as we get going here today. Um, but I wanted to um, tell you a little bit very briefly about the University of California Statewide Integrated Pest Management Program. Uh, we were founded in 1979 uh, through funding from the California legislature. And our mission is really to get um, ecologically based integrated pest management information out to uh, California residents, whether they are farmers or um, uh, residents, homeowners, apartment dwellers, uh, landscape professionals, uh, school staff, anyone who has a pest, uh, UCIPM has information for you. And so what we do is we develop science-based information um, that is economically and environmentally sustainable and socially appropriate. So anyone can, can practice anything that is on our website. Um, there are lots of options for, for the, um, the pest management needs around our homes, landscapes, and in agriculture. And so one of our goals is to protect human health and the environment by reducing risks that are associated with pests and pest management strategies. And so uh, we will be going over today um, how to achieve some of those uh, pest management solutions um, by finding information on our website. But before we leave this screen, uh, one of our, our mottos is making ecosystem-based integrated pest management the way that Californians manage pests. Next screen, please. And so we introduced ourselves. Um, there are some pictures of uh, the three of us that are on this webinar in the in the top um, uh, row, um, but not um, uh, part of the panelists of this webinar are three of our um, locally based advisors. Uh, we have Andrew Sutherland, Neve Quinn, and Siavash Cheravati. They are uh, local area IPM advisors that are in different parts of the state, and so this is our core team, and we pretty much. Uh, reach out to our communities and then pull information into the statewide program to see what more information um, we need to put on our website or outreach and education um, activities. And so there are just a few of us and we, we try to do a lot to get the information out um, to our, our um, audiences. All right, so today we're gonna to be talking about the uh, University of California Integrated Pest Management website and navigating it and some of the new features that some of you who are familiar with our website may not know about or, um, uh, or some things that aren't even online yet that we want to um, share with you. Uh, and so we have about 280 people on the webinar today and more seem to be joining us. So we're gonna continue speaking um, about our website to show you some features so that we can try and show you as much stuff as possible in the short hour that we have with you today. Um, there is the link to, or sorry, not a link, but the URL to our website is ipm.ucanr.edu. Um, Elaine is going to navigate the, through the website while I explain things. Uh, we are going to try and go slow, um, but uh, what is best is, is for you to watch and then you can try later to navigate through uh, on your own. But we want to show you where you can find some features and, um, and then you can play around with it at your leisure later. So while we uh, go through the web, the, excuse me, the website, I am going to um, stop my video so that I'm less dis distracted and so are you. Um, Elaine put the website URL into the chat. So hopefully everyone can see it there um, and we'll share it again at the end of the presentation. 
So this is our homepage and you'll see that our homepage is uh, divided into some sections. We have home, garden, turf, and landscape pests. And these are the four sort of buttons in the middle. And hopefully you can all see our cursor. We've made it nice and big for you. We also have a section for agricultural pests. And while pests that are in your gardens and landscapes may be similar to pests that are in agricultural fields, the way you manage them is often different. So a codling moth is a codling moth. Um, they come out at the same time, whether it's in a field or in your backyard, um, you know, depending on where you are in the state. But the way you manage it is going to be different if you are a commercial grower versus having one apple tree in your backyard. And so it's important if you are not an agricultural professional, a farmer, a PCA, and you are a residential gardener or you just have a backyard or you manage landscapes um, to uh, pay attention to the information on the home garden turf and landscape pests. Um, and so we also have two sections um, below that, natural environment pests. So some of the pests may attack uh, plants that grow more wildly that are, aren't um, ornamental and in our landscapes or, or non-crop plants. And then we also have many new pests that come into California that are considered exotic and invasive. And so we have another section on that. In further webinars, we will have um, a webinar dedicated to exotic and invasive pests. So we won't be discussing either one of those today. Um, we are going to focus on home garden, turf, and landscape. Uh, we will come back to this uh, homepage a little bit later to show you where you can find some of the new things that um, get added to our website. But uh, before we do that, we're going to go into the website and uh, show you how to find things in the home garden, turf, and landscape. Uh, I'm going to be calling this the um, home and garden page from now on uh, to make it easier on my tongue to get words out of my mouth. So on this web page is where you're going to find links to pests in and around the home, the garden, um, and we have various ways that we've divided this page up to help you navigate through it. At Towards the top of the page, you'll see pests of home structures, people, and pets and it's being circled right there. This is the section where we have compiled the information on pests in and around the home. So these are household pests, and you can see that the, the um, subheading there of household pests, that will link to a page that has the three bullets under it where we've divided the information to pests that bite, sting, or injure, wood-destroying fabric pests, nuisance pests, and vertebrate pests. But if you click on the household pest link, that will take you to the page that has all of those sections. So if you wanted to jump to one of those sections or another, you can do that by clicking on one of the bullets or you can um, just do the, the household pest. So this has um, uh, divided into, um, as I said, pests that might bite, nuisance pests, vertebrate. Sometimes these pests fall into both categories. Um, or all three categories. And so you might find things in um, numerous places on our website. So most of the information on this page goes to what we call our pest notes series. And I'll get back to what that is in a minute. They also have, you can see QT, QT next to some of these um, pest listings uh, stands for quick tip. So we will show you quick tips in a little in a little bit, but the quick tip is just a short version of our longer pest notes. And while that may not make any sense right now, that's what QT means. So let's go to one of these pages. And the page I wanna show you is the ants um, page. The ants page is a little unique from some of the other pages because we have a lot of information on ants on our website. So this is what we might call a landing page. It has lots of things on ants on this page. We have four um, uh, pest notes on ants and some videos and some information in Spanish and um, some identification tools. And all of these are gonna be listed on this page. 
So if we go to the ANTS pest note page, which is called ANTS household, this is sort of our general ANTS pest note. And our pest notes are uh, organized in that they have an introductory paragraph or in this case three, um, a section on identification, a section on life cycle and um, biology and damage, and then we get into the management. And so for all of our pest notes, they are going to be organized in that relative fashion. Sometimes they have different um, headings, but we always want to um, uh, explain the pest to you and help you identify it. If you uh, attended our IPM webinar last week or you've come to some of the IPM trainings or you know IPM, the number one thing to uh, consider before any kind of pest management activities are started is to identify the pest correctly first. That way you know what you're dealing with and how best to control it. And so you'll always find identification as, as one of the first things on any of our pages. Then the pest notes will get into the management and under management, we go through the various integrated pest management concepts like prevention and cultural controls, physical controls, and he links, uh, uh, scrolling down there, um, how to monitor, how to exclude things, and then um, we'll get into biological control and um, usually last on our pest notes and other pages, we will talk about chemical control. And so this pest note tends to be really long because we have a lot of ants in California. There are many pest notes on our website, which we'll show you um, where they, where you can find them all. Some are very long and some are, are much shorter. Um, and so this is just one of the resources we have for ants. And if you go to the top, Elaine, this is what we call the online or HTML version, but you can also uh, download and print the PDF, which is in a printer friendly version. And what's showing right now is what is our older style of PDFs. Um, Belinda, our writer editor, who's uh, one of the panelists, she has been working on redesigning the pest notes so they look a little nicer. Um, and we've been adding color photographs. So the PDF for ants and the publication is um, about 10 years old. And so we will be updating it very soon. Um, and so we're gonna show you in just a moment, a uh, one of our newer versions from a newly updated pest note. But so this is what it looks like in, in print form. It's exactly the same material, the exact same text but we have more pictures on our website than we put into these, these PDFs. Um, but either one will get you the information you need. All right, let's go back to the ANTS HTML. And one of the things we, we put into some of our pest notes are videos. If we do have a video that we've produced on one of these pest topics, you'll see it either embedded into the side or um, you'll see um, it at the top in the top section that says in this guideline. So there you can see it says related videos and um, we'll show you videos a little bit later. I do see in the chat, there's a lot of questions about ant management. We're not gonna talk about specific management today, um, but we will be covering specific uh, pest management in later webinars. So hold the questions on specific um, solutions at, at this time. All right, let's go back to the um, household pest page. And I'm going to show you another pest note um, that is uh, the link for the spiders. Um, a pest note just goes straight to the pest note. It doesn't go to a landing page on spiders. So this is um, our spiders pest note. It was updated just last year. And the online version, the HTML ver version has the same layout as the ANTS pest note. So all of them are gonna have the same layout. You can see at the top, we have it identification management um, and specific things that you can jump down to that section. We have related videos that you can watch on spiders. 
But if you go to the download PDF button at the top, this is going to show our newly updated design. So compared to the ANTS printable pest note, this is what our new design for our pest notes look like. We have um, the pictures in color. We have um, some other colors and uh, we've moved some features around that is based on some of the feedback we've gotten on our old ones. So yes, they, they do look better and we've got great pictures of spiders for those of you who love spiders like we do. And for those of you who hate spiders, you can learn all about spiders. And this is a pest note that talks about spiders as pests, but we all know that spiders um, are beneficial as well. Um, and so we'll have a we'll have a talk on spiders in another webinar. All right, let's go back. And so going back, you can use your browser back button to navigate back to the home and landscape page, or you can use uh, the navigation on the the top, which is called breadcrumbs, and Elaine is pointing to it to get back to the home and garden page. You can also jump back to the home and garden page on the side, the left-hand column that says home and landscape pests. Either one of you, those will take you back to our home and garden, home and landscape um, uh, main page. All right, so we're gonna go to the next section, which is pests in gardens and landscapes. And um, that section has two ways to find your pest issue. You can search by your plant type or the plant host type or you can search by the category of pest. And um, they go to the same information, it's just how you want to find that. So if we were gonna go looking for a pest on tomatoes, we would go to vegetables and melons under the choose your plant type. And this will take you to a menu of vegetables and melons that are commonly grown in California. Obviously there's more crops that are grown, we are always adding to this page, we'll be adding some new crops um, this calendar year, and we're also adding herbs to this page uh, very soon. Elaine and I are working on those. But we have existing crops that go to um, information to help you narrow down what pest is causing um, damage to your plant. So I said tomato, let's go to tomato. And by choosing your plant type, you're going to greatly narrow down the possible pests that might be attacking your plant. We have um, about a thousand pests that we cover on our website. That includes plant pathogens, insects, mites, spiders, um, weeds, vertebrate pests. We have a lot of potential pests in California. But if you have a plant and you know what that plant is, if you look by your host plant, you will greatly reduce all the searching that you have to do for what might be attacking it. So on this tomato page, um, you'll see the list of invertebrates, which is insects, mites, and others, um, snails and slugs that might be causing damage to your plant. Um, there's also diseases. And then not to forget that not every ailment to plants are caused by a, an actual pest. Sometimes they are environmental issues, wind and sun and nutrients, um, et cetera. And so this greatly narrows down the, the possible pests that you might have. And you can click through that link, uh, those links to, to see if the description matches what you're looking for. So if you think you might have um, leaf-footed bugs, for instance, you found a big bug, maybe that's it. You click on leaf-footed bug and that will take you to the leaf-footed bug pest note. And again, it's organized the same way as our other ones. We have a lot of pictures, identification, um, life cycle, and management strategies. We also have other pages. If we go back to the tomato menu, we have other pages that go to not pest notes, but shorter information pages. Um, and so if we go to flea beetles, uh, we have these shorter pages that still have the same information organized in the same way where we have the description of the pest, identification, life cycle damage, and solutions. Um, and these are just shorter pages that are not um, the longer pest notes, but they're still um, going to get you the information you need. And you can click on any of the pictures on our website to bring up the image in a larger um, view. 
and you can share that image with, with someone who might be asking you a question or you can use it to help you uh, better identify the pest. Uh, so going back, um, and then we, hit, we do have links within all of these that go to other pictures or other resources. And um, you know, we try to have as much useful information as possible. One of the other things that we, um, we recently did on these, these vegetable and melon crop pages is we organized the cultural tips in one whole page. Um, they used to be in separate pages and it was a lot more clicking around our website to find them. We've put all of the cultural practices into one page and um, updated some of the information so you can find them more. And again, in this guide, if you, pit, if you click on any one of those, those um, anchor links, it'll jump you down to the section that you're looking for and you don't have to scroll as much. And there you go. All right, so let's go back to the Home and Landscape page. So that's some new stuff on vegetables and melons, but also if you have pests on fruit trees or flowers, we have the menu pages that work in the same way. And we have another way for you to help uh, narrow down your potential pests, but we're gonna, we're gonna show you that in just a little bit. So the next section after this is some common pests. Let's say you already know that you have spiders or leaf-footed bugs or, um, or rats. Rats right now are a big issue. Um, on citrus and also on tomatoes. As we start to grow things, um, rats might be um, causing problems. So if you go to birds, mammals, and reptiles, this is going to be the list of, of the potential pests of gardens and homes and landscapes. One thing about vertebrates is that they are wildlife. They live wildly. We are not saying that all wildlife are pests, but when they become pests to your home and garden, then they're pests. Um, but so if you have a rat problem, you can scroll here to the rats pest note. And also next to it is the quick tip. Let's go to the quick tip and just show what a quick tip looks like. So the quick tips take the longer pest note and really whittle it down to um, a, a short, shortened um, bulleted information to help you get really quick information. And then the pest note is going to be longer and more detailed. And the quick tips, they are online in this format and they're also in a downloadable PDF. And we provide those PDFs to the UC Master Gardener programs to use in their outreach efforts when, um, when we're able to be in person. And Elaine's opening up one of them so you can have a look. So this is what the quick tips look like. We have another older style, just like the older style of our, our pest notes. And we're, we're um, working on getting all of them updated to this, this new format um, that we have um, uh, been working on lately. And these are usually in print in a, like a brochure size. Okay, going back. So back to our home and landscape page. Um, again, uh, uh, we're gonna look for some other information that we have. And I know we're going through this quickly and we can't show you everything. So we wanna just show you where to find things. And then in your own time, you can, you can go and explore. Um, one aspect of integrated pest management can be the use of pesticides. And whether you use pesticides or not, or you talk to people about pesticides is a, is a personal choice, but if you are going to use pesticides, we wanna make sure that you have good pesticide knowledge and information. So under pesticides and alternatives, we have a number of resources for you. And we're gonna show you some things on the pesticides in homes and landscapes um, section. So that goes to another page where we have even more resources. So there are some of the videos and um, we'll show you where to find all of our videos um, in a little bit. Um, but under about pesticides at the top, we have a very useful active ingredients uh, database. And the active ingredients database goes over some of the more common pesticides that are in use in California. And again, this is just for home and garden, home and landscape. We don't have absolutely every pesticide that's available on this list. We are updating this list. And in fact, um, also in this calendar year, we will have a new look and feel for this page and um, of the pages we're gonna show you in a minute. 
But what's useful about these active ingredient pages is that they give you information on the potential hazards of these pesticides to non-target organisms. So Elaine, if you click on um, acephate, I think it was acephate we wanted to show. If you click on acephate, you'll see um, a useful uh, table at the top that shows the potential hazard to this active ingredient to aquatic wildlife, to um, some of our beneficial um, insects, mites, and spiders called natural enemies, specifically hazards to honeybees, um, and then hazards to people and other mammals. And we have the acute or immediate toxicity and long-term. Now, all of this kind of needs its own explaining um, in a separate uh, training, but uh, we have this information to help you make a decision. And um, what the L and the MH and the VH further down on this page is where those um, abbreviations are explained right there in the footnotes. This is one of the, the sections of our website that we are updating and we are going to be moving these footnotes so that they come after the table so that you can more easily see what it is you're looking at. But um, we'll be making improvements to this page. But one uh, interesting um, uh, feature of our page is that you can go uh, compare the different active ingredients by going to a pest note and clicking on a button that we're going to show you right now. Oh, actually, no. We want to go to the lawn insects pest note. Um, let's see. We're going to have to shift here really quickly. Um, I think I asked you to go to the wrong wrong page. <laughs> so Elaine's going to show a, a different um, uh, active ingredient. This is Bacillus thuringiensis. So let's look at the chart really quick and see the potential hazards are, are um, not as long of bars and not that red color um, that helps you uh, under see that something is low or very high. That's what the L means. But we're gonna show you how you can use this to make decisions about what product you might use if you decide to use a product. So go to the lawn insects pest note. In this section right here is uh, you can link to the pest notes from the active ingredient database. And then if you scroll down to the very bottom of the lawn insects pest note, and to many of our pest notes that deal with outdoor pests, you click on the active ingredient compare risks and that button will take you to a similar looking table as what we just showed you in those two active ingredients. But these are active ingredients that are um, listed in the specific pest note for lawn insects, all right? So this table is going to show you all the, the pesticide active ingredients that are mentioned in this specific pest note, and it has all of those same ratings. So um, as we were on the acephate one, those had you know those long bars and very high toxicity to bees, et cetera. And then we were just on Bacillus thuringiensis or BT, where it showed the low ratings. This is the options for chemicals that are available right now, except carbaryl. Carbaryl is not available to um, um, unlicensed uh, users anymore, so ignore that one. But um, these are some of the pesticide active ingredients, and you can use this chart to help you make a decision. If you see that something's really highly toxic to honeybees and you are concerned about honeybees around your area, then maybe you choose something that is not highly toxic to bees. If something is more toxic to people, so that's the M on this chart, right? The moderate toxicity, perhaps that's not something you want to use. So you can use these charts to help you make decisions. The other thing to point out on this is the California Prop 65. Some of the products that are um, available to homeowners or to residents um, are potential cancer causing materials. And uh, without getting into that, if something is on the California Prop 65, which is the um, uh, indication for possible probable carcinogens in California, we will label it as such on our website. Some products are also on the EPA 
um, carcinogen, carcinogen list. And if they are on the EPA list, we will also indicate that in this database. Um, and so all of our information comes from, from published uh, sources, which you can see at the bottom of these pages. So this is one tool that you can use to find information. Um, and again, we are updating these pages to include more descriptions of things and also to add some, some products that are currently not in the database. So you can look for that in the coming um, few months to a year. Okay, back to our pesticide page. Um, I know we got a little further into our pages, but um, we're gonna go back a few slides and here's the pesticide active ingredient database again, and back one more to our pesticides and home and landscapes. So I encourage you, if you are a pest user of pesticides around the home and garden to look at some of the resources for this page. Um, there's the potential for pesticides used outdoors to get into our water ways and to contaminate um, water and um, aquatic wildlife. Um, there's also concern with your safety and should you be using gloves and goggles and how, how can you um, safely um, mix, measure and, um, and apply pesticides. So uh, we are going to be having more webinars where we talk about pesticides and their use and safety and, and hazards but you can go to this page and find um, lots of useful information in English and Spanish. And so um, keep your eye out for other webinar offerings on pesticides. All right, let's go back to uh, the home and landscape page. And underneath the pesticides and alternatives, we have um, uh, an area we just call more information because we don't know where to put everything all the time because we are always coming up with new tools and um, we, we just kind of house them there. So one thing I want to show you that relates to what we've already gone through today is the plant problem diagnostic tool. Um, we showed you that if you go to the vegetables and melons section or trees and shrubs, you can narrow down your pest by choosing your host plant but we have this really nifty tool called the plant problem diagnostic tool that um, you can use to do the same thing, but with even more detail. And this page describes how to, how to use it, but we're gonna show you how to use it. So you can X out of this description and we're gonna use um, tomatoes again. So here you have those, those uh, four out of our five host plants, lawns and turf is, is not in here. But if you go to vegetables and melons, again, we're gonna choose tomatoes. What happens when you make one of these choices is it pops up in the left-hand column. And just by making a choice on only vegetables and melons and not the other groups, we have narrowed down our potential pest results from you know, 800, 900 to 181. Now that's still a lot to have to sift through. So let's choose our plant name from right above there. And we're going to choose tomato. And so we'll scroll down to tomatoes and you add it to your list and it pops up over there under plant names. And anytime you wanna remove something, you just click the X, the red X button. Now our results are at 39 and those 39 will match that list that we saw on the first page we showed you. But we can narrow down even further using this plant problem diagnostic tool by choosing plant parts. So if you go to the plant parts, now is where you can put in what you're seeing. So what part of the plant is being damaged? So for our example, let's choose fruits. Um, so we showed before that we thought we had leaf-footed bugs, so we're gonna add fruit to our list. And you can do multiple. The more you add, the more choices you will, um, the more results that you will have. But just by choosing fruit, our results are now at 23 because not every pest attacks every plant, but not every pest attacks every part of a plant. So let's try and narrow it down even further by choosing the damage. Now, this is where this gets a little tricky. We don't have every picture for every crop for every pest there is. So some of these pictures won't show what you're seeing. The important thing to do here is to look at the words. 
So this describes what you might be seeing. So is something discolored? Are there holes? Is there no fruit? Is the fruit split? So Elaine's going to choose discolored and scarred or russeted and stings and punctured. And let's just, you can choose as many as you want, but the more you choose, the, the more results you'll have. But now our results have gone from 23 to seven. So you click on view results and this is where you'll see a little list over there on the side. And hey, look, leaf-footed bug was there. And that was the one we were hoping we might find. So this will take you to the pest note, but it's within this sort of database system. So it's a little, uh, um, the photos look a little strange, but all the information is exactly the same. Um, and so you can um, go back to the diagnostics. If you're not fine, if you don't think it, any of those are what you're finding, you can go back and you can restart. Um, one thing I wanna point out on this page is why does it look different from all of our other pages? Because we have a lot of pages on our website and we are redesigning them. You see this green color and the redesign of the pest note with the green and the redesign of the quick tips with the green. We are trying to um, make uh, our, our, our uh, printed and some of our web pages um, match up a little bit more. So you might find that when you click on a link on our website, it goes to a page that looks different from the page before. You're still in our website. Um, it's just we have redesigned some sections before others. Um, and we have a lot of pages, so we're working on it. Okay, so let's go back to the home and landscape page and you can click on that from the, um, the green bar right there, or you can um, use your back button. So, so see already our page looks different than, um, than that page we were just on. So we have a lot of information still under that more information um, section. And we have a seasonal landscape checklist that we want to show you, but I wanna point out a couple other things that we won't have time to talk about today. Um, so if you scroll down to the more information, Elaine. Uh, the seasonal IPM checklist, we're gonna to get to that in a second, but I wanna point out that for anyone um, who wants specific um, help on a pest issue, you cannot, ask us all the questions because you saw our small team of people. We can't answer all the questions for all the people in California. We encourage you to uh, utilize your uh, local county UC Master Gardener program. They have wonderful volunteers who've been trained by University of California experts and they have helplines and you can ask them questions and they will get you the um, information. So there's a link there to find your local Master Gardener program. I know we have many Master Gardeners on our webinar today. Um, and we also have lots of publications on other home and landscape um, pests and issues. And then you can subscribe to our newsletters um, or specifically our retail nursery and garden center newsletter. Uh, let's go there really quick before the seasonal landscape. This is what we call our retail nursery and garden center um, IPM newsletter. It's not just for retailers. It was part of a project that we were targeting um, retail nurseries and getting information to them. But we will be changing the title of this with our next grant cycle to just be urban and community IPM news so that it's appropriate for everyone. You can subscribe to this right now today if you want to. Um, and you can read all of the back issues. And so this is for more of the consumer side of, of pests and, and pesticide issues and not the licensed professionals. Um, but we, uh, we publish three newsletters each year and we announce things like our webinar through that mailing list. But other than that, we don't have time to spam you. We're not gonna sell your information. Um, and so if you subscribe, um, you'll get the next issue automatically sent to you. But you can go back and read all of the back issues at your leisure if you like. Okay, so let's go back to the uh, seasonal landscape IPM checklist. And we just briefly want to show you that. So the seasonal landscape IPM checklist, we call it slick because um, it's easier. This is where you can find out what to do in your landscape in different times of the month 
depending on where you are. Currently, we only have limited regions or areas in this database. Elaine is working on adding new regions. The reason we only have certain regions, and if you're joining and you don't see your county there, that's because we didn't have the information at the time we created this, but we have since compiled information for Southern California and the Bay Area and coastal areas. So we will be adding that. But if you go to any one of these um, uh, places, Elaine, so Kings County, what's gonna come up is the tasks or the pest or other uh, uh, plant things to consider during this month of April in the Kings County um, region. And this is focused just on landscape pests. So this is not gardens. We're not gonna tell you um, what to do for your tomatoes in this one. This is about landscape plants um, and some, some pests of, of homes too that might be kind of landscape and might get in your home. So you'll see here that, that there's ants listed, but also you know, um, fertilize some of your fruit trees and cane berries and adjust your irrigation depending on your rain. Um, maybe apply mulch, um, manage peach leaf curl, uh, pick up uh, fallen fruits. So this is a really good resource to give you sort of a to-do list for your landscape. And of course, it's not gonna be the same for every landscape because you're not growing everything. But this was designed for professional landscapers that service um, homes and other areas so that they kind of had a checklist that they could give to their, their clientele. And if you click on print friendly, the print friendly um, selection there that Elaine's on will pull up a, um, a PDF um, that you can print out and it actually has a checkbox for checklist. And all of those, those um, underlined in blue, both on this page and on the, the web page, will link to the appropriate page on our website. Um, so it's either the ants pest note or the um, fertilizing cultural tips um, for, for cane berries, et cetera. And again, there's a lot on our website. So I encourage you to look through this too. But let's go back. We're getting um, close to time here and we wanna have a little time for, for questions that um, Elaine and Belinda haven't been able to, to answer as we go. What we want to show you is how to get to some of these things really quickly. So above the picture that's on this Home and Landscape page is a box called Quick Links. <clears throat> so if you wanted to see all of the pest notes in our pest note library, you go there and this will bring up, I think we have 176 pest notes now, Belinda. Um, and most of them are in English. We do have a few in Spanish and you can see that in, in the box there. If you wanna find out what has recently been updated, you can go to recent changes. And the recent changes will show you the date that something was recently published. So we just published the bats pest note um, just a, a few weeks ago, and we showed you spiders, and you can see about two years worth of recent updates. And we're gonna show you where else you can find recent um, updates to our webpage um, in a moment. Uh, so going back to the pest note um, library, we have these sectioned out by pest category. So the uh, invertebrates are in one section, plant diseases, weeds, and then other kind of miscellaneous and management methods um, that you can jump down to. Um, and so here you can go to either the, the website, the HTML, or you can go to the, um, the PDF directly, and then you see the, the date that something was published. We are always updating these. I think right now we have 20 or 30 in some stage of being updated and that's the job of Belinda and I. So um, it does take us a little while, but our pest notes are written by experts in the field um, who have knowledge on this pest and its management. And they are directed, all of our information is directed at um, California conditions for California pests. All right, let's go back to the home and landscape page. Also in the box up at the top are uh, a link to all of the quick tips in our library. We have 53 quick tips in English and 50 in Spanish with the remaining three being uh, translated and will be online soon. We're not gonna talk too much about the quick tips. Um, um, I mentioned them already that they are shortened versions of the pest notes. Um, but let's go to the video library really quickly. 
And the video library, we are always adding more videos, maybe not all the time every year, but we are going to be adding um, more videos and shorter videos soon. We have videos both in um, the agricultural um, field and also for home and garden, and then we get them translated into Spanish. So you're going to want to focus on the home and garden videos that Elaine's pointing to now. And um, you'll see them sorted by their um, topic, um, either pest or we have um, other topics like pesticides or, um, um, yeah, pesticides are active ingredients. So uh, we are trying to make our videos shorter. Some of them that you'll find here are a bit longer than others, but we know that people have a shorter attention span sometimes and just want the quick information. But have a look at those um, as you like. And let's go back to the Home and Landscape page. You see how many times we go to the Home and Landscape page? This is the hub for everything. So if you get lost, just jump back to this page and hopefully you'll, you'll get there. So also in the quick links, we have a quick um, uh, bullet up there for the, the slick, the seasonal landscape IPM checklist and to the plant problem diagnostic tool that's underneath. But I skipped pests in the urban landscape blog. We are regular bloggers. And if you subscribe to our blog, you are going to be one of the first people to know about what's new on our website. We, we post um, information about seasonal pests. Um, so yeah, just yesterday we posted about um, aphids and aphid eating insects. And that's a picture of the aphids on my roses outside my house, but they're not there now because I hosed them off. Um, and, and other activities that we do. And this is where we announce any new tools, um, updated pest notes, anything exciting. So you can subscribe to our blog. Um, right there. And we have other social media that we also share this on, which you can um, find on our Home and Landscape page as well. Um, right there under Make a Gift, where you can donate to our program if you are so inclined, um, are links to our social media offerings and a link to our YouTube where our videos live. While, while you're on that side, Elaine, let's scroll up a little bit onto what we call the left-hand column. There are lots of other tools that we haven't been able to talk about today, but we will be covering them in future webinars. We have um, a, a weed photo gallery, which is a great um, uh, tool for identifying your weeds. And so in another webinar, we'll, we'll go over the weed gallery. Um, but if you want to go there really quickly, and, and then we'll point out a couple other things. When you go to the weed photo gallery and you're going to go into it, click on the picture. Don't click on the words identification tutorial. That'll take you elsewhere. Click on the picture. And then uh, if you click on that, it'll take you to the, the gallery where you can choose um, features of your plant. And then it'll take you to a, uh, a narrowed down menu to, um, to help you identify. So that's a really good tool. Um, keep your eyes out for the announcement for our, um, our, our weed identification webinar um, that will be later this year. Um, also on the left-hand column, and you can get to it just from this page, is the Natural Enemies Gallery. We will have another webinar on biological control and natural enemies. But I was playing around in my, in my garden by my roses this morning, and I found all kinds of little ladybug larvae. Hopefully you all know what they look like, but if not, we have this Natural Enemy Gallery. Ladybugs are actually called lady beetles in in um, the entomological terms. So if you go to convergent lady beetle, you're gonna see pictures of the familiar lady beetle, ladybug that you know, there's the adult, but hopefully you all do know what the larval stage looks like. I had recovered a couple larvae that were fallen, had fallen off my plants and I put them back on my plant to go eat those aphids. Um, and so the larval stage of many insects don't look like what the adult stage looks like. And so in addition to identifying your pest, you may also um, want to find out more about these natural enemies, these beneficials, so that you can make sure that you're not squishing these good guys that are actually helping us with, with um, our, our pest control. So that's the natural enemies gallery. Again, we'll have a separate um, training on that. And these pages are also being um, 
uh, updated and we're adding more um, natural enemies to these pages and they're gonna have a different look here soon. Before we leave this page, I wanna point out something that people ask us all the time. Um, how do you make ladybugs stay after you buy them? So there's a, um, a link here that Elaine's pointing to on this Convergent Lady Beetle page. Convergent Lady Beetles are the beetles that if you buy a pint of them in the store or if you mail order them, these are the ones you're getting. So we published in that retail newsletter that I showed you um, an article on how to keep them um, around a little longer. And you know, you're not gonna ever have 100% of them stay, but this, this is some, um, some ways that you can try and keep them to stay in your landscape longer. So have a read of that. Um, so we are five minutes from um, needing to stop. Uh, let's see, is there anything I forgot? Oh, let's go back to the home page. Um, our home page um, is where we have a, um, a list of what's new. So the main UCIPM homepage, and you can go right at the top there, home. So on the side, it says what's new, and this is going to be our announcement section for all the, the new things in our agriculture section, but also what's new in the pest notes. And so here you can see some of the pest notes that's new, and we haven't even added, um, oh yeah, bats are right there. So um, we have new pest notes on pokeweed and houseplant pests and armillaria, and then we have updated pest notes on bats and spiders and city mold and all these things. So that's where you're going to see what's new. And if you go to more, if you want to see when everything has been added to our website, more than just what's there, this is all the, the website changes we have made since 1995. Um, and this helps us keep it straight when we're, we're reporting things. But it's also, if you wanted to know, oh, I missed it when, when beets and chard and radish were added to the, the crop list, it's right there. Added March 29th is when we added those crops. So um, we, we have so much on our website and we're adding things all the time. The last thing I wanna tell you about that I forgot to say when we were on the vertebrates um, uh, pest note list is that we are going to soon, very soon in the next couple of months, have a um, diagnostic tool for vertebrate pests. And the vertebrate pests um, uh, list right now, you, you have to know what you have. But sometimes you only see tracks or you see droppings or you see damage. So we're gonna have a diagnostic tool called the Wildlife Pest Identification Tool. And so look for that, subscribe to our, our um, social media and, and you'll um, learn when it's when it's finally online.